Hello. A few days ago on the BBC Culture website, they posted a list of the best books of 2021 so far. And I know it is a bit early for a list like this, but you know me, I can't resist a book list and seeing what I've read, what I haven't read, what I agree with, what I don't agree with, and uh, but mainly looking through the list for suggestions of books that I might not have come across before and books that I might want to read sooner rather than later. So this list was compiled by Rebecca Lawrence and Lindsay Baker, who are two journalists, and they picked 13 books that they think really stand out. So I'm going to go through and discuss them and give my thoughts and reactions to them. I'd really love to know in the comments if you've read any of these books, or if you have a book or books that you think really stand out um, that are newer books that just came out this year um, that you really want to champion and get more people to read. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go through the list now. Um, the, I have read seven and a bit of them, and uh, I'm going to talk with the very first book about why I've only read a bit of this book so far. First off is A Swim in a Pond in the Rain by George Saunders, uh, who of course won the Booker Prize for Lincoln and the Bardo a few years ago. And this is a book of short stories by great Russian writers, uh, including uh, Chekhov, uh, Tolstoy, Gogol, and Turgenev. And uh, it reproduces their stories in this, uh, but also George Saunders gives commentary on them both in the, the structure of the stories, but then talking about issues related to them and how how our, our lives can connect with the stories of these great Russian writers um, that were written many, many years ago. And it is that perfect blend of a kind of academic type uh, look at literature um, that I love, uh, but in a very relatable and human way. And so I think anyone can connect to how Saunders is writing about these stories and, and giving his commentary on them. It's a sort of like philosophy of life combined with like a, a really in-depth look at fiction. It's, it's like having a class with George Saunders because he teaches at Syracuse University. And so this book sort of grew out of lectures that he He's given at the, the university. And I've only read a bit of this so far for a very particular reason, because I've been reading it aloud with my partner at home with uh, all this time that we're continuing to, to spend at home together. i am really grown to love reading aloud to each other. And this is such a lovely way to read some short stories by um, great Russian writers that I probably, you know, wouldn't necessarily get around to, to reading anytime soon. I mean, I'd have read some of them before, but a long time ago. And, and uh, yeah, it's just a lovely way to, to bring it alive and, and talk about it more. And, and I think a nice way to get more reading done if you're someone that is, you know, stuck at home with other people who don't necessarily want to read, that, um, that it, to make reading into a communal activity where you read to each other. And I made a video early on this year about how to read more this year. And, and I think this is a really good method if you struggle to do as much reading as you want to, to try to encourage Courage other people in your household to read aloud um, with you and you can read to each other and then discuss what you're reading. And I, I know this can be slightly challenging with some people in your household if they pref would prefer to just watch television or look at their computer or look at their phone or their tablet or whatever. But but uh, if you can encourage them to, to read along with you and read aloud, um, it, it makes it yeah a wonderful joint activity. Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. And uh, this is one of the publishing events of of the year. The first novel that Ishiguro has published uh, since he won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And it's about Clara, who is an artificial friend or AI, uh, basically a mechanized doll that's purchased as a companion for a little girl uh, for a very particular reason. And there's a whole mystery about why she was purchased and what what's happening behind the scenes of this story. And Ishiguro creates such good suspense in this novel. I, I just loved reading it. And it's been so interesting since it came out, seeing lots of other people's reactions. I think um, some people, other people have been like disappointed by this book, but I think it's like subtly philosophical and in uh, in the story and the issues it, it talks about. And uh, and it's it's almost like deceptively so. It's, he like sneaks these like larger themes in there, um, though I know some people have just felt like it's just a children's story and it does have sort of the 
tone of a children's story, but also has very darker elements and much more meaningful elements to the story. Luster by Raven Leilani. I think this novel is just extraordinary. Uh, it's about a 23-year-old uh, Black woman in America who strikes up a very strange relationship with a middle-aged white couple and moves into their household. And yeah, the, the whole dynamics of this relationship is is very odd. And, and she, she gets at the, the, the creepy strangeness of it and these uh, conflicting relationships uh, that have to do uh, with uh, sexual and racial and office politics. But uh, that's all sort of beneath the surface of this very compelling story uh, about the dynamics of this relationship. And it also portrays um, how she, she works as a uh, cyclist delivering goods to people who have ordered them uh, through an app, um, which is, I, I think it's really important to, to get the perspective of of uh, people who uh, are working in these conditions because we have, uh, or at least so many of us um, at home have been ordering things to be delivered to home. And there have been all these workers who have been busy delivering these things. And, and I think their perspectives aren't often seen in fiction. I think this is the first instance when I've, I've read about this. And so I think that element is, is extraordinary as well as all the other parts of this. And and where this novel goes is so surprising and compelling and and just like really juicy, rich storytelling. Uh, so yeah, I, I enjoyed and uh, learned so much from this book. Aftershocks by Nadia Awusu. Uh, I haven't read this memoir yet, but I've been really wanting to, to get to it because it sounds really good. So the author's father was a diplomat. And as a consequence, when she was growing up, she lived in many different places from Tanzania to Uganda, to England, to Italy, and many other places as well. And so her sense of home was constantly being disrupted. And uh, I think it's told, it sort of goes backwards and forwards in time. And uh, so to create this like disrupted sense of identity and and um, because she never had a fixed place of, of home. And, and I think that just sounds like such an interesting way of approaching these questions of, of who we are and, and and how we define ourselves. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. Let Me Tell You What I Mean by Joan Didion. This is a group of essays by one of America's greatest writers uh, about a whole range of subjects uh, from uh, Randolph Hearst's uh, Castle to going to a gambler's anonymous meeting uh, to focusing on famous figures like Ernest Hemingway or Nancy Reagan uh, or Robert Maplethorpe, uh, but also essays uh, about why Joan Didion writes herself. There's an essay called Why I Write in this. And I'm glad I read this article before I, I went out and bought a copy of this book um, because these are actually old essays by Joan Didion um, published between 1968 and 2000. And if I hadn't known that, I would have assumed that this was just a, a new book of essays by um, the writer, um, which obviously isn't a bad thing because she's an extraordinary writer. And, and I would be really glad to, to read read some of her essays. Um, I've read a number of her books in the past. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to rereading these essays. But I was a bit disappointed a number of years ago when there was a new book by Annie Dillard, um, who's another one of my my all time favorite, like current American writers. So she doesn't produce all that much. So I was so excited to see she had a new book out. Um, but it was actually old essays um, that were just sort of put together in a new book form. And and yeah, and I was a bit disappointed when I, I was like, oh, these are actually old essays and there's nothing really new here. And so, um, so yeah, I think that's like a slightly disappointing element of it. But, but Joan Didion is extraordinary. There's, there's no denying that. Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. And oh my goodness, the debate and scandal around this novel, which is sort of funny and ironic because I think at its heart, this novel is quite a traditional story about a pregnancy and then deciding what to do about that pregnancy. So a woman named Katrina discovers that she's pregnant while having 
having a relationship with her co-worker named Ames. And after Katrina confesses to Ames that she's pregnant, Ames confesses to Katrina uh, that he used to be a trans woman named Amy. He transitioned into being Amy uh, before detransitioning to becoming Ames. And while Ames was Amy, uh, she had a relationship with a trans woman named Reese. And uh, Reese has very strong maternal instincts and has always wanted to have a child, but finds it very difficult to, to become a mother um, because she is a a trans woman. And so they decide to or or debate about becoming a family unit to support this new baby and, and the, the prospect of this new baby. And so it's about all the, the messiness and complications of this relationship. And there's a lot of messiness and complications, but it, it explores that all in such a sympathetic and interesting way. And yeah, it looks at all these issues to do with sexuality and gender, but also about the issues of, of parenthood and motherhood. And I think talking about a lot of these issues, like, like describing them in a way which is so relatable and 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 you can see parallels in experience um, between a lot of these these characters and I, or at least I felt a, a strong connection with them even though their lives are very different from my own and it's just like a really fascinating intelligently told novel and so so smart and so enjoyable as well so uh, so I think this is a great novel the profits by Robert Jones jr and and this is another novel that, like, at its heart, this is just a, a love story about two men who fall in love with each other. But these two men are slaves on a plantation in the American South before the Civil War. And so at the start of the novel, you see them in their relationship. And it's this almost like self-contained existence that they have with each other, that they're very happy with each other. But then obviously, because of the circumstances, there are all sorts of complications which come into um, to to cause trouble in this relationship and and put these men's lives at, at stake and uh, and they aren't the reasons that you would necessarily think of what I think is so clever about this novel is that it delves into the the real politics and social dynamics and religious dynamics of this community on this plantation and uh, and how that affects both their relationship and the many other characters that uh, this this novel contains and it, it explores so many of these characters lives in a really interesting and dynamic way. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's a very poetic and beautiful and powerful novel. No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. And uh, so this is a novel um, written by a woman who is the famous internet 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 personality um, who's famous on Twitter and the the protagonist of this is famous for being on Twitter and in the first half of the book talks about uh, the the humor and irony and um, and sort of tragedy of being caught up in this uh, internet personality and and having um, all sorts of uh, relationships mediated um, through this this online existence and um, travels around the world talking uh, about this subject. And then the second half of the book is a much more intimate family story and is about the the uh, the, the complication and gets further into the, the tragedy of being sort of stuck in that kind of mind frame and having um, social and familial relationships mediated through this this online sensibility um uh, but yeah also about the just the the real world problems that that she's dealing with um that her family is dealing with in in the second half of this novel and i i found the tone of this quite uneven and um and yeah and so like i i thought the the first half was really effective and uh but the second half yeah just sort of lost it for me and i just personally didn't feel the emotional connection that I know some other people have felt um, with this this novel, and um, and because I thought the the tone of it was just just strange, and and I sort of understood I I think what what she was trying to do in it, but yeah, it just didn't quite work for me. Leave the world behind by Rahman Alam. Uh, this is about a a family that goes on a holiday to an Airbnb out in the the country um, to a house that they they've rented uh, online, and uh, and while 
while they're there, they uh, discover something dark is happening in the rest of the world, and they're sort of disconnected from it while they're they're staying in this this house out in the countryside. And they they discover that something really bad is going on when the couple um, who actually own this house arrive on their doorstep and say, "We want to stay here again, even though we've rented it to you, because uh, there's something very disturbing going on in the rest of the world." And you get little snippets of what's happening in the rest of the world, but you'd never fully understand how the world is sort of collapsing around them. And just the way it follows the the psychological journey of these characters sort of forced into this contain, contained environment with each other, um, I, I think is so moving and, and powerful. And um, it's, quite a, it's quite a gripping, thrilling read, but also one that I think has subtle messages to say on a whole range of, of subjects. So yeah, I'd highly recommend this book. I was sort of surprised to see it on this list because it was actually published at the end of last year in the, the UK. So it's not really a book from this year, but, but I mean, that's sort of like splitting hairs. And I'm sure like a lot of people that, that bought it at the end of the la- last year are still reading it this year, but uh, but yeah, it's a really excellent book. Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. This is about a 24-year-old woman who works at a talent agency and she rigorously counts her calories every day because she was taught to do this by her mother when she was younger. And she meets an overweight woman um, who she forms a connection with and a relationship with. And it's uh, about their interactions with each other. And I've not read this novel yet. I, I read the the Pisces by Melissa Broder, which I really enjoyed, even though uh, it was quite a controversial novel and not everyone agreed about it. But uh, I really liked the the sensibility of the, the writing. And so, yeah, I'm keen to read more by her. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is, uh, again, quite like a traditional story, a uh, love story about two young people who fall in love with each other. Um, but these are two young Black uh, people living in London. Uh, one, um, he He's a, a photographer and she is a, a dancer. So they're both artists and they, they form this very strong connection with each other. And what I think is so subtle and beautiful about this is it describes their how their relationship develops naturally. Like it's not necessarily like an instant sexual relationship, but they develop a real friendship and, and really strong um, psychological connection with each other and, and spiritual connection with each other. Um, but about the, um, the impediments they find in their relationship, especially from its, it's narrated from his point of view. And interestingly, it's narrated in the second person. And so he's speaking to, to you. And, and so it's to himself, but also to the reader or to this like anonymous other. And, and uh, yeah, and so it describes this, this relationship in such a moving um, and yeah, really poetic way. Um, it's, it's quite a, quite a poetically written novel, um, but, but very powerful and, and describing the, the the state of being a young black man in current English society and all the complications to do with race and masculinity and um, yeah and so struggling with all these issues while trying to have this this honest and like beautiful um, young relationship. Land of Big Numbers by Tay Pin Chen. This is a collection of short stories. I've not read it yet, but it sounds so intriguing. Uh, the narrative is uh, supposed to be a blend of social criticism and magical realism uh, about a whole range of subjects and, and characters from an anti-government blogger to a call center worker. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to diving into some of these short stories. Might be another good book to, to read aloud to my partner. And finally, there is Fake Accounts by Lauren Aller, uh, which is a novel about a nameless narrator who discovers that her boyfriend is an anonymous internet conspiracy theorist. Uh, so, uh, and the, then it follows like the the fallout from that and and where she goes from there and uh, I've I've heard a lot about this novel and I've been really wanting to get a copy of it and read it so I'm I'm hoping to do that soon because yeah I think it's so interesting these questions about our online relationships and and navigating all these questions and of course this is something that Patricia Lockwood explores in her novel as well but um like I said this wasn't entirely successful for me so I'd like to see how other writers are tackling this issue um, in fiction as, as well. Uh, so those are the 13 books. Um, let me know, like I said, in the comments below, if you've read any of these or if you're interested in reading any of these uh, as well, I'll put a link 
link to the, the article below so you can find the um, journalists' um, comments on these uh, books as, as well. But uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any absolute standout books that, that uh, you would encourage me and other people to read as well. So thank you for watching. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.